Games rated E to M. Welcome to Nintendo Power Podcast. This episode, we revealed your favorite Nintendo Switch games of 2018. My name is Chris Slate, and returning to the show today are Kit Ellis and Krista Yang from Nintendo Minute. Thanks for coming back. Hi, Chris. Thanks hey, Chris. for having us. Yeah, and it's great to have you here because this is going to be a special episode. It not only marks the last episode of 2018, but it also marks the first full year of Nintendo Power Podcast. Yay! Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You I've, did it. I've listened to your voice in all sorts of places I never expected to over the past <laughs> yes. year. Yeah. I'm, think about that. It's I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to yeah. try very hard not to think months. about that. <laughs> But I hope it was mostly in your car. Um, So we wanted to do something special in honor of this. So instead of the usual segments, what we're going to do is um, we actually went to Twitter and asked the listeners what their favorite Nintendo Switch games were this year. And we're going to spend this episode discussing the winners. So are you guys ready? So ready. So, so ready. Great, great. Well, first, we should make it clear that we're not giving out any actual awards here. Um, We're just having fun. And we pick these categories and nominees out ourselves just for the show. And obviously, we haven't played everything. Um, but we think we, we picked some great, um, outstanding games here. And, um, and we want to thank everyone who voted. Actually, in just a few days, we had over half a million votes were cast across all 13 categories. So thanks to the listeners for that. All right, so we're going to get started here with our first category, which is the most fun multiplayer game that secretly ruins friendships. And the nominees were Fortnite, Overcooked 2, Super Mario Party, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the winner was... Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Oh, interesting. Uh, not shocking. <laughs> not shocking, although there's some some really, obviously, on a list with Fortnite and Super Mario Party and Overcooked, you've got mm-hmm. some really worthy games here. Yeah. And a lot of fun that, as the, the title implies, c- can quickly turn from fun to maybe slightly aggressively fun with some some friends or frenemies as, as you play the games. Yeah, I, I feel like, I don't know, I, I picked my personal one as Super Mario Party. Hmm. Because I feel like Smash is like inherently competitive. competitive. Yeah, competitive and something that you're doing to compete with somebody else. So it's like a little bit more like you're going into it knowing your friendship is ruined anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then like a game like Super Mario Party or Overcooked 2 has an element of like co-op in it sometimes where you expect to work together, but that goes just very wrong. And mm-hmm. I have some personal personal trauma personal issues to from work working through. with yeah. certain people at this table not chris oh my gosh <laughs> um <laughs> that that has definitely caused such ruined friendships so first of all how dare you say that about producer jasmine that's, <laughs> that's really insulting but i i had smash uh, as my number one um i took the, the the point about ruining friendships a little bit lightly i had another multiplayer game that i wanted to highlight which is diablo 3 mm. um you know you and I have spent a lot of time playing that game together. That just makes the minutes and the hours melt away like softened butter. <laughs> that is like the opposite of ruining a friendship. Yeah. That is like you're, you are like blessing a friendship right, with right. that game. So. Yeah, there's so many great multiplayer games this year. And I think, you know, Super Smash Brothers, just the series is in like the multiplayer Mount Rushmore <laughs> in my mm-hmm. book. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and this is just such a good installment of that. I think it had, that was my pick, obviously. Yeah, I agree, although um, especially here recently around Thanksgiving, I played a lot of Super Mario Party with my family. And, yeah. And that always starts off with the great picture of the smiling parents and kids <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> it just devolves. And then, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. And then it devolves into like absolute chaos and you're just screaming at each other because you can't get people to just do what you want them to do. I know, or you get to that final round where, where it's really close and then they give those bonus stars. Yeah. Oh, the bonus stars are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Again. You get sorceled. Per- personally traumatized. <laughs> oh, you do get sorceled. Yeah, you get sorceled. Don't get That's what don't. this game says. That's true. <laughs> yeah, don't be like lulled into a false sense of security with that toad in a bow tie. He's up to no good for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's just all a plot from ba- uh, Bowser to split everyone apart. <laughs> all right, we're going to go on to the next category now, which is Best Retro Redux. These are the new games that were made in a retro style. And the nominees were Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, Mega Man 11, The Messenger, and Save Me Mr. Taku, Tasukete Takosan. Nice pronunciation. <laughs> I practiced. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> the winner is... 
Mega Man 11. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, in hindsight, I guess not too surprising, but I thought there were a bunch of games on here, actually, that had gotten a lot of attention specifically because they really brought back the retro feel. Mm -hmm. That was not my pick either. Is that your pick? uh, No. So I went with uh, Bloodstained, actually. And I think, you know, Mega Man 11 is is a great Mega Man game. But I think back to, you know, some of the Mega Man games that I really love, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, those still, you know, really hold up for me in a great way. And I would be just as happy to go back and play those as I would to be to play Mega Man 11. Bloodstains takes a lot of inspiration from Castlevania. Mm -hmm. Um, I think back to some of those really early Castlevania games, and I have a harder time going back to those. Mm -hmm. It's a bit harder than you would think. So I Mm -hmm. really appreciate something like Bloodstain that has kind of that more, some some more modern trappings, um, some, uh, you know, it, it's some admissions that, you know, maybe myself as a modern gamer is not as steely as I used to mm-hmm. be. Um, so it has kind of that old look and that old feel, but it does have a, a, a freshness to it. Yeah, it is yeah. one of those games where it you don't realize until you play it just how much even the smallest little modern changes matter. Just yeah, seeing a game totally. in widescreen, right. for example. Yeah, just little things. And that, that was actually my pick as well. I thought that was um, something that just really paid, you know, homage to that style um, obviously a lot of inspiration from the Castlevania series, but done in a way where it's very accessible. And I'm not a very good like platformer at all, but I found this game to be very accessible and very like fun and enjoyable and challenging enough to play. Cool. I'm glad to hear you guys are on the Bloodstained train because that was one of my <laughs> favorite games All aboard. Yeah. I played it you through multiple times. Are you foreshadowing right now? Don't a give it bit. away, Chris. It's like the first 20 minutes. We are so closely <laughs> guarding these pieces of paper that we're holding. It's, it's like the world's highest stakes poker game. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare touch this. Yes. Can't let each other see what no. uh, we've got no. written down. No but yeah, I, I, you know, Bloodstained, actually, or The Messenger, probably I yeah. could have gone either way on that for similar reasons. Bloodstained, like you said, really made me feel like I was playing, uh, you know, one of the classic Castlevania games, but with all the, the great modern updates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same thing for... Um, for the messenger, which obviously feels a little bit like you could say the old Ninja Gaiden games, but mm-hmm. also at the same time uh, is totally fresh and adds kind of the more Metroid-like world structure. So mm-hmm. I, I had a great time uh, with both of them as, as both fresh new experiences that still kind of scratch that nostalgia itch. Yeah, I'll admit that I did not play Save Me, Mr. Taco. What what what's the elevator pitch for that game? Well, the, the first thing you'll notice is it really looks like an authentic Game Boy era game. Mm. Um, you know, it even has kind of the, the pea green kind of um, okay. aesthetic, even though you can go in and change that just like you could with a, a Super Game Boy for the Super NES back in the mm. day. But um, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a quirky little game that has a, a, a heartfelt story, but um, is, is a lot of just good arcade action in the in the old school way. My, my really important question, Mr. Taco or Taco-san, if you will, is he an octopus? He is an okay, octopus. Okay, good. Oh, good. It's taco in the Japanese uh, yes. term for octopus, yes. not Great. as a, I'm glad you not brought a, that up. Not as a, not as a walking, taco. talking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, not as a walking, talking taco. Too. Yeah, you know, <laughs> may, that'd be a great uh, code if you could put that in and just change which kind of taco you are. All right, the next category is the welcome back category. And these are the games that um, we'd seen previously before, but these came back in remastered or enhanced versions. The nominees are Dark Souls Remastered, Diablo 3 Eternal Collection, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, or Okami HD. And the winner was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Nice. This was actually one of the closest categories. So oh, really? all, of, all of the games here had really strong representation. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, definitely Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was a game that I was really excited to have back on um, Nintendo Switch. And of course, Funky Kong. Now, Chris, I feel like every time we bring up Funky Kong, you like cringe. What's <laughs> Ooh, the deal? Called out. Why, what, what, Explain why yourself. Why don't you love Don- Funky Kong? I don't Tell know what more. response I'm giving, but I actually do really like Funky Kong. <laughs> okay. In fact, <laughs> involuntary I, responses? I d- initially did not like Funky Kong. Oh. But I feel like he went somewhere around the time he appeared in Mario Kart Wii. I felt like he went all the way around from being <laughs> maybe a, a cringy Kong all the way to being <laughs> like this ultimate, like maybe he's even in on his own joke kind of Kong. So I really yeah. appreciate so now you're his. In, you're in, on, on the in camp for Funky Kong. Yeah, okay. I mean, if okay. there's a party, he gets the first invite. He brings oh. the ratitude, and I think uh, Funky Kong represents. Okay, we well, have we have more Funky Kong in a later category, yeah, so I'm, let's I'm not glad. let's not exhaust all of our Funky Kong conversation <laughs> here. That's good. Um, my pick for this one is Okami HD. 
Mm. I have always really loved the Okami series, and I've actually played it on like many different platforms. Um, but really enjoyed this one on Nintendo Switch, and somehow, even though this is a quite a long game, played through the entire game once more, and still found it to be you know super fun. The touch screen was really really good um, for Okami. Uh, on the switch so i really like that as well but yeah i think that game if you haven't played that game you should really give it a try on switch yeah i'm um i'm not surprised that donkey kong won that's a excellent excellent platformer and it's so great to see it get kind of a new a new audience on nintendo switch um mm-hmm. coming over from wii u um i i agree with krista for for myself it was uh, okami hd and uh, i had dabbled in that game um before it came to switch but never really got too far into it and i actually got quite a bit further now um, and I actually had kind of a, a magical magical experience. I was in Japan and I started playing that game and it was like, oh, this is the full Okami experience. This is like wow. the full I'm immersion. Sur- I'm enveloped with all of this. That's awesome. Yeah, so and that was really style, cool. the art style that game is really, yeah, just yeah. so unique and it's beautiful. It's timeless, and, really. And really timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the gameplay still holds up. Um, mm-hmm. I still have not finished it. I do need to power through it's and go a, a little game. bit further, but I got a lot so. further than I did um, the first time through. Yeah. Um, and again, I would just uh, you know want to recognize Diablo. I played that game first on PC um, when it initially came out. That game has changed a lot since then, yeah. uh, and the version that's on Nintendo Switch is you know significantly different mm-hmm. than that initial yep. release. There's just a lot of changes and a lot of new content they put in, new mm-hmm. classes. Um, and obviously on Switch, you've got like you know the Ganondorf armor and other mm-hmm. you know my, and just my, playing my on cuckoo the go. pet. Playing don't, it on the go. Don't talk bad about my cuckoo. No, no, <laughs> but playing it on the go. That's pretty cool. I mean, you never yeah. could do that on PC, so that was like a magic. <laughs> Unless you were carrying, <laughs> carrying it. Yeah. Around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think all these games. You know, one of the things I've enjoyed this year the most with Nintendo Switch is just being able to um, go back and, and play some games that I maybe missed the first time, or mm-hmm. you know, that I didn't with the original Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I I kind of rushed through it on Wii U and didn't you know unlock all of the secret levels and all of that mm-hmm. content so, oh, so you're like, a speed runner uh, uh, you know not good so, enough to be so called a speed runner claimed speed runner but it was great to be People able to love go funky back Kong for speed runs That's true. well you know i was going to say too that was a great thing about that addition is he on the one one end is great kind of for advanced players for speed runs but then on the other end um, my son was able to really get into this mm. game in a much the hovering better way yeah. That, yeah. yeah it makes it a lot easier if yeah. you're if you're not speed running all right, well, next up is the Woe Neat category, <laughs> which I think at one point was called the Golly G. Willikers category. <laughs> <laughs> Both <laughs> names are excellent, by the way. <laughs> and these are the games that, uh, or not necessarily games, but just cool, creative new products. And the nominees were the NES controller for the NES Nintendo Switch online service, Nintendo Labo, Pokeball Plus, and Starlink Battle for Atlas, which had all that great um, Star Fox content and mm-hmm. then also the the additional ships the and things you could buy. ships that you could change out the different parts and everything which is pretty cool that's right yeah so all really cool creative stuff and the winner is nintendo labo nice nice Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah which would have been my it would have gotten my vote as well i think uh especially if you look at everything that you get from all the three different kits there's just a lot of creativity there especially the vehicle kit the the latest one Mm -hmm. um had just a ton more gameplay in it so it's more than you know you, you could build it but you can also actually you know explore that world of of um that vehicle kit and it's actually really fun we, we did a nintendo minute episode on that and it was really really cool yeah i you know i would recall my own experience of building nintendo labo for the first time and just kind of marveling at like the engineering work of you know how do you take something that starts off as a piece of cardboard and comes into this very cohesive you know usable item mm-hmm. and uh i think it you know ticks that whoa neat box and goes way beyond that yeah and you know i i just really enjoy just the making process primarily because i'm not very crafty so Mm -hmm. when i can complete a step and it's it looks just like it's supposed to and i I feel like i get the satisfaction just whoa i didn't mess it up you know which is great at like holding your hand through that if you are not a like pro diy person yeah just using the uh on-screen and instructions i know so So, like perfectly um done but my actual winner in this category is the pokeball plus Hmm. Ah. i love the pokeball plus so much i feel like it really brings a lot to pokemon let's go and it makes it just feel makes you just feel like a pokemon trainer you know Mm -hmm. if like if only we had this when we first played pokemon can you imagine how amazing that would feel you know Mm -hmm. um but it really immerses you into that world 
Uh, you can take it around with you and um, use it for Pokemon Go as well. So it's a very versatile product, but um, also just really fun. And it looks cool when you get to hold an actual Pokeball. Yeah, you could be like, you know, our friend uh, Bill Trinan, who's really living the dream. He's at the Game Awards with the Pokeball Plus <laughs> on his belt loop. Um, the perfect party uh, accessory, yeah. one could say. <laughs> yeah, we had a picture of him that went online and everybody was like, wow, look at that Pokeball Plus. It That's was like, great. He was catching some Pokemon there because it was going like crazy. Yeah. Was, like, buzzing away. I was like, okay. <laughs> I just like using the Pokeball when you have... Um, like right when you capture the Pokemon mm -hmm. and then I always hold up to my ear because I want to hear really hear well. The... Noise. Yeah. It's also really good for what I call lazy gaming where you can just lay on your couch and just like throw the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually have to like look at the screen or do anything. You can just like throw One handed gaming. That's right. Yeah. It feels good. You could, you know, pig out with the other hand or something. It's <laughs> awesome. All right. The next category is best ball game. And the nominees here are FIFA 19, Mario Tennis Aces, NBA 2K19 and NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. And the winner was Mario Tennis Aces. Nice. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this game, and yes. it's been great to see them continue to add on to it mm -hmm. throughout the year. Yeah, that was my pick in that, in that category as well. And I think that all the, the characters that, they, that we've been adding have been really cool. Um, that was another game where... It was really fun to like play it on the go. You know, we we played a bunch on the plane, mm -hmm. I think, and it was really nice just to have that. And then, um, yeah, and it looks really good too. Like all the different moves that the characters do are so it's like so like over the top. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to watch and play. I um I, I like Mario Tennis as well. I you know, in thinking what what sports game um stood out to me most. I went a little bit off script and it's it's one that's actually not on this list which is NES Ice Hockey. Oh. oh. Or, uh, Nintendo Switch Online. That's one of those NES games that I just didn't you know, get exposed to much as a kid. And I was like, well, let's check this out. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It really holds up. It's like, wow, this is like a very simple yet deep hockey game. I don't even, I'm not even a big hockey guy but I was like, couldn't stop playing it. Yeah, I like. I used to play that game a lot when I was a kid. It's interesting to hear that you, coming to it fresh. Yeah, you, it's you, it still worked for you today. But back then, and 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 because of that, I still love it now. Is just the simple strategy of you have those three body types, the types right? of players. Yeah, the the medium guy, the the heavy guy, and the skinny guy. And you know they each have you know different power or speed because of that. Just just that, just the mix of that alone um, provides a, a, a surprising amount of depth yeah, to how yeah. you approach the game. You know, not not a ball game, so I guess that's why that's not on the list. <laughs> that must be why. Puck game. Best puck game. <laughs> Best puck game for sure. We can just go ahead and call it that right now. Um, next category: the most hype Super Smash Brothers Ultimate moment. And the nominees here are the announcement trailer with Inklings, the E3 presentation in which it was announced that everyone is here, the character reveals and the World of Light reveal trailer. Um, I will say this was another very close category. Mm. I was somewhat surprised by the winner. I, I did oh. not know. I have, no, I have no thought of what might take this here. I want to hear tell it. Us. Tell us. Tell us. It's the World of Light nice. reveal trailer. I okay. kind of felt like that was going to be it for some reason. You know, that was, I think... Um, I think the, I would have expected the character reveals, honestly, because those tend to be the biggest moments um, for the lead up to a new um, Smash game. But I think maybe just the, the fact that the World of uh, Light reveal trailer came it was like the last big thing that was announced. Yeah, exactly. And I think it was very unexpected. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I think everyone was just, af after that um, video had run, that Nintendo Direct had run, everyone was just talking about this Kirby moment and how Kirby is the only one that survived like how could this be there was so much speculation about what actually happened so much conversation around that that I felt like this could be what people are rem maybe are remembering the most um, from that I think mm -hmm. it's cool also that you know within Super Smash Brothers you have a lot of these inherent rivalries you have Mario versus Bowser and so on but in this there's they're all unified against this other common threat so they do mm -hmm. have to work together in a way that you don't often see yeah, cool. it's great to see that. And although it's obviously the um, World of Light mode is very different from the subspace emissary yeah. that appeared in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and it's not nearly as heavy on the story, I do love those elements, and that's kind of what Smash is all about at the end of the day, is seeing all these worlds and characters kind, kind of, of together yeah. and interacting in a way that you mm -hmm. can't see anywhere else. Right. My favorite um, was definitely the Everyone is Here reveal. Mm. I think 
for two reasons. One, because it was such like a huge surprise that the, the roster was going to be all the characters ever. But the second reason why is when we were at E3 and that announcement happened, they um, we had the booth reveal of like that big, long illustration with all the characters. And that was just like the coolest thing ever. Like having that huge illustration just kind of populate with all the characters. And then after we announced new characters, they would like kind of fit into that illustration. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just amazing. And so that for that reason, I think that's my favorite. Yeah, then moment. people started wondering, well, who's going to fit into this little empty I know. spot? Right. Or what, what shape body could go here and all that? And we have a progression of all the different versions of that same illustration that we have like lined up. And mm -hmm. you like can, nev can never guess like how could this, how could they fit this character in here? It's amazing. You know, like they've like really thought out that that uh, piece of art I um you know thinking back myself I got very precise with this and beyond just the character reveals I think my favorite was the King K rule trailer because ah. um, it was like we were a little bit beyond the announcement which was kind of this like exhale moment of like okay new Smash Brothers game is coming we're starting to finally understand what it is and what it's about and that King K rule trailer was like all right we're really starting to have a lot of fun with this and kind of do this misdirection and you got so much kind of personality of those mm -hmm. characters coming through is like, you know, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong's eyes just shot through that window. Yeah. Oh, King DDD. And the King DDD <laughs> switcheroo. It was fantastic. I love the music. The game, <laughs> yeah. game Plank Galleon, I think it's called. The, oh, re nice. the remix is so yeah, good. so good. Yeah. I, you know, and I think, um, you know, I for me, I would have picked the character reveals, even though the rest of these are great too. But, and my favorite character reveal, since you mentioned yours, uh, was... Um, Simon Belmont, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. the character going back the last couple of games in the series that I've wanted to see join uh, the you, cast. You were glad to see other. Luigi finally get what was coming. <laughs> yeah, Aww, it was Chris. so perfect. I wouldn't have thought Cruelty. that he would be in that trailer, but it was he was a perfect fit. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I just love the reveal and just the way everything looked, and then just to see how. Um, you know, authentic the representation of that mm -hmm. franchise is in yeah. Smash was so good. I know we were talking about how we were both playing challenge mode as, oh, yeah. as, as like Simon or Richter, and you had the Dracula battle at the end, which is like so cool. Oh, that was so good. That is so yeah. good. Yeah. And I think Dracula is also, if you play through um, classic mode with Luigi, is the last oh, boss. Oh, no. yeah, I done that so yet. he can get his revenge oh, from that awesome. trailer. Oh, finally, <laughs> Luigi gets his day. Yeah. That's good. That's awesome. So, Krista, can you name, since we've both named our favorite character reveals, do you have oh, a favorite? Oh, man. I like the King K. Roll one a lot mm. as well. I think that one definitely was, um, the trailer was really fun and kind of different from like the Simon Belmont um, reveal, which was a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that one's probably my favorite one too. Yeah, that's one of the best. Yeah. And next category, most challenging game. The nominees were Celeste, Dark Souls Remastered, Dead Cells, and The Messenger. These are all very These are some hard challenging games. games. Yes, yes. yes, very hard. And the winner was Dark Souls Remastered. Ah, okay. I yes. guess not a big surprise there. It's famous yeah. for being very well challenging. deserved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really test players' skills. But at the same time, um, and I haven't played as much of Dark Souls Remastered as I have of as I have of Celeste, mm -hmm. but I think Celeste would have been the one I would have personally picked. Did you you eventually finish Celeste? I did, yeah. I haven't, uh, there's still like an extra bonus world I have to do, but I've done everything yeah. else. I remember we were doing the, the podcast with Matt Thorson and you were yeah. just like telling me like, I gotta I got crunch through this game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told him on the show, yeah, like research. I won't stop until yeah. I've beaten it. And Whoa. I think as I was saying that in my mind, I thought, what uh -oh. you're, you're lying right to? now. <laughs> this is it's not gonna happen. It's recorded in public and you can't go back yeah. on the word. Did yeah. you know, did you play it with, the entire game without any of the like oh, the yeah. assists and all that, of that stuff. That is did correct. You, Chris? I did really? not use any assists. Did you? Oh, okay. I, mean, I, think <laughs> I, trying... I think I believe you. I'm trying to like yeah, well, gauge if you're like lying. Or good not. thing I've got my lie detector with me. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm Why don't you just that? plug into this yeah. really quick? Really? Yeah. No, I was determined not to use any, but it. I mean, Dang. It, it wasn't so much skill as persistence in a lot of areas. I would just Brute die on a it. screen like a thousand times and, yeah. and just keep going. But you also had a big achievement with the messenger too, right? You got all of the, what were they, the yeah. hidden? Yeah, like the hidden, uh, oh, I forget, they're, they are the, the green tokens. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, you got all of those? I did. And wow. I did cheat and look <sighs> up uh, uh, the locations of a couple of those. But even knowing where they are sometimes, they're just was, really hard just to get to. Yeah, yeah, just getting to getting it. Getting it done. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How yeah. Many That's total the tough were there? part. Oh, um, I can't remember for sure. I want to say... I want to know how much time you actually spent on this. It's maybe around 50. <laughs> that that oh, could be man. totally wrong. I'm just kind of guessing. That's a, that's a lot of investment. Yeah. It's one of those where I filled up 
part of an SD card just on the videos I saved oh of my myself God. beating these levels. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'll ever yeah. do this again. I want oh, proof evidence. that it happened. That's good. You don't yeah. have to take the lie detector test anymore. Just look at your <laughs> yeah, I'll bring in the videos. <laughs> um, mine was Dead Cells. That was, I really like that game, but I just could never get very far, which is mm. really sad. I, didn't, I don't think I made it past like that second garden area. Oh, yeah. Like, and that's like really lame. You know, like people were like way, way further. And I just couldn't do it. It was so hard. It is hard. But it's fun though. That, but that, it's still fun. That would have been my own um, selection too. I think in the, the Dark Souls vein, it's a game where you think you've reached your limit, but yeah. you somehow push ahead to go mm-hmm. even further. Like there were a lot of times where I do a couple runs and I sort of was, you know, ending up at about the same, same spot. Place. I was like, well, yeah. this is this is about the best I can do. And then you do another run and I went like way further. Like I made it like three areas past that. I was like, whoa, I had a breakthrough. But and then I, you can never replicate that. And I was never that. able to do it <laughs> again. That's what I'm saying. You, you basically would have to go back yeah. to just ending up in the same place. And you're like, darn. But at least I knew I had it in me to sometime if, that if, was if the, the one, stars aligned, that was I the could one do it. time forever right. your whole life but that i also had a lot of fun just experimenting with kind of like character builds yeah of like, the build well, part was really fun you know do i want to do more bows i ended up really liking bows i didn't yeah. use shields that much mm-hmm. of like what what really is the ideal character build to get yeah, through and then this? sometimes it's mm-hmm. like do you need all the help or do you want to just have like the, the other stats or yeah, something yeah. you know it's like yeah that was fun but i'm i'm very I, was, I looked at other people playing this game and i was like oh yeah i'm really bad at this Another hard game that I want to shout out, Ikaruga. Oh, uh, yeah. Nintendo Switch now. Uh, I remember playing that on GameCube. Uh, my frothing demand for Ikaruga increased uh, on <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Um, that's, a, that's a game where it is an accomplishment to even get past the, fast, the first stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got, you can do a co-op. Uh, you can do Tate mode. Oh, the Tate oh. mode. If you want to uh, turn your Vertical, TV sideways, somehow, that TV. Um, or just you know find a way to get in in, in, in tabletop mode, your your switch um, going vertically. But that game is tough but fun. Yeah, I haven't. I've I've I know very well of that game's reputation. I haven't played it too much myself, but it does remind me of a game that I think came out this year, Just Shapes and Beats. Mm. Um, oh uh, yeah. I played yeah. a good amount of that, and um, that is similar. You know, just lots of bullets and trying to yeah. figure out Avoid which ones. The bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Sky Force is another game that came out on Switch that's pretty similar to that as well. Mm. Yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Next up, we have the counterpart to that previous category: the <laughs> most relaxing game. Ah, I ah. love it. The nominees here are Art of Balance, Kirby Star Allies, Night in the Woods, or Picross S2. And the winner is Kirby Star Allies. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. That is a nice relaxing game. Lots of action and some some puzzles yeah. to figure out, I, but nothing too intense. I can agree with this. I think when this game came out, we were working on some really tough projects at work. Yes. And I used this game as a <laughs> relaxation, as a relaxation tool, method. And it, it did the trick. Yeah. This is yeah. the lazy game. Lazy gamer game perfectly. You can do that laying down for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can play any game laying down. Just what lay are you down, talking about? Play Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say Art of Balance was, is also up there for me for relaxing games. Like everything about that game is just like a spa experience. You know, like the, <laughs> the music and like the zen background and you just like kind of zone out. Like, mm-hmm. you know, playing that game, just, you know, sit in the dimly lit room. Yeah, Maybe I can tell you zone of... out when we play it together because you're not very good. Oh. You're really ruining my relaxing moment. <laughs> yeah, you, the relaxation. You are, you are the cause of stress for okay. me, so you shouldn't even be playing that game yeah. with me in the first place, actually. You know, we, so I should say, the three of us, we're neighbors at work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sit in, in between Chris and Krista. Chris understands me so well. <laughs> he is, the, he is the, uh, oh. the mediator in all of this. We're neighbors. We're like a family. That's right. <laughs> Just going to make sure you two uh, behave yourselves <laughs> at the table. Um, you know, all these, uh, I, I agree with Kirby. Personally, though, for me, uh, it would have been Cross S2. I don't know if this game's been, um, you know, if as many people have had a chance to play this game. But it is, um, if you haven't seen it, it's hard to describe. But, you know, there have been several in- incarnations of Cross. There was even a, a Legend of Zelda-themed Cross on Nintendo 3DS. It's a puzzle game, and it's one of those games you can kind of your brain just works on a different track so you can be watching a tv show at the same time you're playing this and it's just a really good way to unwind i play this game in a moving car with kit driving <laughs> oh that's <laughs> we right we were making a video in, about it yeah in in a serious stressful perhaps a not, red a, light a not situation. super relaxing so it was not relaxed at all not you don't have to play it in a, while you're lying down yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i need to just lay down yeah. <laughs> 
Krista presents Prone Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds nice, yeah. actually. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. All right, the next category is the best looking game. And the nominees are Dragon Ball Fighters, Octopath Traveler, Okami HD, or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the winner is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty good. This is, a, this is a strong category. I know. It is. These I, are really good four options. Yeah. I think it'd be tough to pick because obviously when you say best looking game, that could be anything from more of a technical achievement. It could achievement. be subjective. Yeah. 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 Or the art style mm-hmm. or, you know. They each bring something really different, I think. Octopath mm-hmm. Traveler, I thought maybe was the one that just looked the most new and unique. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, it obviously I had an old feel to it, but in a way we'd never seen before. Exactly. And especially those like character um, like screens that they had for mm-hmm. some of the, the characters in that game were like really well done and the, the lighting in that game was really beautiful. Yeah, I think um, for me some of the effects really stood out like in the, the snow area as you would move you would get the sparkling mm-hmm. of the oh, snow yeah. or like water in the background yeah. and I was like wow this is going places. It has that aesthetic like you're like you're looking at it through a micro lens like yeah. it's, they're mm-hmm. almost toys or something that have yeah. been photographed. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, n- well, well uh-huh. before we move on, yeah, one uh-huh. other game that I thought was was great to look at, uh, Starlink. Oh, um, oh yeah. I, I enjoyed that game. All the planets. Um, I think it it struck a really cool balance between you know, like you were saying, being very technically impressive mm-hmm. of like you know everything you know looks very you know well modeled, um, yeah. but kind of from an artistic standpoint as well. Like some of the planets that they built out were very creative and had mm-hmm. a lot of art direction to them. I thought it had one of the best renditions of the Star Fox characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like really oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and then also like the the creatures and sort of the the veg- vegetation they had on all the planets were all like very creative and unique and all different too. And you can kind of explore all the all the different planets. And it was pretty amazing how much they put in that game. Of course, we didn't have a best fur category. <laughs> oh, you could have had Fox and Funky Kong Funky and Kong. maybe Funky Kong. Maybe Funky we blew Kong. it. Yeah. <laughs> Who else is fur? Oh, there's a lot of Smash characters. Smash, with, Smash with characters fur. with fur. <laughs> yeah, next year. <laughs> <laughs> we demand a fur category next year. Well, for now, we will move on to best soundtrack. Uh, the nominees were Celeste, The Messenger, Octopath Traveler, or Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And the winner is <laughs> Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's kind of hard to beat that game because there's so many. Mu- music tracks in it yeah so it's, it's, it's kinda like, cheating a little bit it's a little bit yeah because it's like music from every franchise in but the at game, the same time so. there's so many original compositions of some of these classic True. songs that obviously they put a ton of work into it yeah yeah it is this is another one that it, it's hard to choose for me it's really stacked you know mm-hmm. i would i would recognize celeste as like when i started listening yeah. to that it's like this there's something this sounds like this. a great soundtrack to a Castlevania game I never that never existed, right? Mm-hmm. And it really contributes a lot to that mm-hmm. experience. Um, you know, Smash is awesome. Another one that I would I would call out that's not on this list is um, Night in the Woods. Yeah, I think that's one where the the soundtrack, the music is good, is great to listen to, but it also kind of contributes to the mood of that game a yeah. lot. Um, but yeah, this is a great list. Yeah, for me. Um, yeah, you just can't beat Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for the sheer volume of music exactly. that tugs on all my heartstrings. Mm-hmm. But I will say that Celeste, I feel like, is perhaps the game that has the where the music has the is the greatest in sync with the overall experience. It it, it it's really unique music. It's very specific to Celeste, and it also really underscores not just the action but the themes mm-hmm. um, that uh, you know are in the story about how Madeline's trying to kind of cope with what she's coping with and the goals she's trying to achieve and how the music changes and evolves throughout the game, I just thought was just so smartly done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my pick as well, actually, Celeste. I thought that the composition of all of the music in that game was so well done and and perfectly timed to, um, yeah, to what was kind of happening within the the story of the game as well. So. Mm And we saw um, the composer at TGA's too, playing in the oh, orchestra. Oh yeah, she was awesome. She up on was stage. amazing. Yeah. That yeah. was great. It's pretty cool to see it live. Mm-hmm. I'll have to take your word for it. Fortunately, I wasn't there with a pokeball. You could have watched it. Belt. You could have. It's, it's a it's a live streamed event, Chris. You can watch no, it I, 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 I did. <laughs> I did. I actually watched the whole stream, but you know, I wasn't there. Playing it cool. No. <laughs> All right. Best narrative. The nominees are Celeste, Night in the Woods, Octopath Traveler, or Undertale. And the winner is Undertale. Ah. 
And I think similar to uh, what I was just getting at with the music for Celeste, for me, the um, both Celeste and Undertale are the games that had stories that really resonated in a way that, um, very emotionally, in a way that I don't normally connect with a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like this should go to Celeste, but I really can't argue against Undertale. Yeah, I gave it to Undertale. The, the story, the narrative, and just the way that you get the story is such a unique element in that game based on your actions and your you know what you're doing in the game the narrative that you get can be you know very different mm -hmm. so I, I thought that was really interesting and everybody kind of had different ways of playing through it there's different people play through it multiple times to get the different endings and so um i think that was very unique and uh i i definitely Loved the narrative um, that I personally got in the game, and then had to spend lots of time looking it up to see what all the other possibilities are and what you know what could, could have brag. happened. Story I got was awesome. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm not even humble about it. It was Perfect. great. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, under so there's two games that I would call out here of of just you know beyond the story, the dialogue is so good. Mm -hmm. Undertale and Night in the Woods. I would actually put I would uh, in this category I, I would choose Night in the Woods myself. Um, but they both really nail just kind of a kind of dialogue that was very real, very casual, but very kind of hard to recreate outside mm -hmm. of a actual human conversation. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, a way that you and I are talking, but if I was actually to write out like a script of like, well, here's a talk I would have with Chris. I don't know how I'd do that. I guess I'd throw in a, a, a G Willikers, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Night in the Woods. Did you play that, by the way, Chris? I did, and and you recommended that I, I should. And, and it's, you still it's on haven't, my list. haven't listened to him? So I'm offended now. My, my but, list um, grows. It's about, Whoa. you know, what happened. I think it's a very relatable story of, you know, what happens when you return to your hometown after some time away and kind of the new perspective that you get on it of, you know, have I changed? Has the situation here changed? Mm -hmm. Is getting that fresh perspective on it that, you know, again, I think it was extremely relatable. And mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, the quality that we noted in a lot of these games. I think that's something we're seeing um, that's great with a lot of the indie titles mm -hmm. is a very strong personal perspective mm -hmm. being shown yeah. in these games. Um, and uh, and so it's, it's and I think it's no coincidence that, you um, of the games that were nominated on this list, most of them are indie titles. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's great to see that uh, kind of fresh yeah. style of, of storytelling. It's something coming that's very in. unexpected, you mm -hmm. know, from traditional video games. And it's nice to see the different perspectives and also the very, like, specific um, sort of elements that that particular developer wants you to get out of the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned this game on the show before, but there's a, a Metroid style action game called um, Iconoclasts that uh, I really like a lot. And at first it seems like it has a very kind of standard story and message, but then there's a, a few things that happen early in the game that really shock you in a way that where it suddenly the characters feel so much more real in a way that you're not used to seeing in, in characters in a video game. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely a lot to uh, enjoy this year in terms of I know of you're about nothing if not keeping it real, so. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Next category, character of the year. Oh, we're back to this. <laughs> That's right. I'm so excited, Chris. Read, the, oh read the nominations. The nominations are Funky Kong from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, King K. Rule, who appeared in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate this year, Madeline from Celeste, and Primrose from Octopath Traveler. And the winner is King K. Rule. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, I think we could have put a lot of characters from Smash yeah. Bros. Yeah. in here. Yeah, but this one in particular was... Unique. I'm having a lot of fun playing King K. Rool in Smash. He's awesome. He's really good. Yeah. He's so sassy. I don't normally gravitate towards the heavier characters, but he I, I tend to do pretty well for him yeah. with him, to, considering I haven't gotten a lot of experience playing mm -hmm. with him yet. And as I've been saying, it's fun to say Blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> say it four times fast. Blunderbuss. Bl ah. <laughs> I can't do it. Tiny helicopter that makes it so you yeah. don't fall. Um, you to know that at work on my laptop, I have a giant Funky Kong sticker. You do. So I do want to recognize Funky <laughs> Kong for his achievements, his accomplishments. His accomplishments The joy funky, that he's brought to all of us. The funky joy that he's um, brought. You know, the only character here who has a mode named after him or her is Funky Kong. That's true. Um, so that I think true. that that's got to count for something. For something. Bring yes. in the funky. I, I will say that I want to give a shout out in this category to Madeline. Uh, mm -hmm. For all the reasons I said below she, or before, she is a character that, we, that has a really great growth arc. And um, the way that she deals with her anxieties and comes to accept kind of the darker parts of herself throughout the story is 
pretty amazing. So for a character that I didn't, you know, that was brand new to this game that I didn't already have a, a love for from like my childhood, mm-hmm. um, she really made an impression on me this yeah. year. Yeah. Now, here we are, the final. Oh. The final fan voted category, the player's game of the year. Now, now I have a suggestion, Chris. Uh-huh. We have some categories that we uh, talked about amongst ourselves. Maybe mm-hmm. we save this category for the very end and, and talk through those first. Oh, okay. Yeah. A tease yeah. for let's the player's not, game not, of the year. Yeah. You know, this is a perfect Peak tease. too soon here. <laughs> All right. Well. We need to just really yeah. maintain this a That's little right. longer. We will circle this one and come back to oh, it. Oh, circling. <laughs> There's a pen and yeah. everything. Wow. <laughs> so official. So we, we do have these categories where there, no one voted because this could be very open to and I think it was too, it was too right. hard to anticipate what, what anybody else might pick. choose. Exactly. Right. Uh, so you want to take us through these categories? Sure. Well, the first of our four kind of panel-only categories, I guess we'll call them, hmm. is games we wish we'd played yeah. this year that we'd never got around to. Mm-hmm. Um, I went back through all the games I played this year and kind of looked at what else came out. I felt pretty good about myself, I got to say. I I think I did a pretty good job of keeping up with it. Um, Mm -hmm. There are two that I would call out, though. One of them is Iconoclast, just because you talked about it so much. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, So I think that's one I need to go back and check out. The other one, I actually just got off uh, eShop the other day, Into the Breach, Ah. which uh, came out around the time of like PAX West. And um, I just kept hearing good things about over and over and over. And like, oh, it's it's so great to play on, on Nintendo Switch. So... Uh, I'm pretty excited to check that out over the holiday break. Yeah. Same here. I, I've heard nothing but good things about that game, but I haven't tried it yet myself. So I have two as well. Um, the first one is that game uh, Transistor, mm. which is from the same developer as Bastion, which is a game I did play and I really liked. Um, so I'm thinking uh, I've seen great things about this game and I've seen you know gameplay trailers and, and things like that, but haven't gone around to playing it yet. But I'm excited about that. And then this one is kind of, Maybe unfair to myself because it just came out like yesterday or today, maybe. Um, it's Greece. Um, yeah, yeah. And that game looks so amazing. And again, I've heard so many good things about it, but it just came out. So I don't think it actually counts because. Most relaxing game contender? Could be. Yeah. Could be. But I'm excited to play both those games uh, over the holiday break as well. This is where Chris has a power move and says that he played everything, so yeah. he's got nothing to contribute. He hasn't played everything because yeah. he's spent all his time playing, <laughs> playing, um, getting all the, the getting green, those, getting those whatever. Green messages. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I've played a lot, but I do, I do sink so much time into certain titles that it... it, it and it, there's it, always time for Shovel Knight. Time. Shovel, I mean, yeah. Shovel Knight's always eating into the, game of the 2018 year. Shovel games. Knight. Yeah. Shovel I'm under Knight. the table right now. I'm playing I'm my 400th <laughs> playthrough right now. Feet. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, for me, I, there's a lot of games that I... I wish I'd played and that I still intend to play, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. The game I'm most ashamed of having not played significantly would be Fortnite. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I I, I have played that a little bit, but basically Popian got destroyed, said, this looks cool, (laughs) I'll come back later, and haven't yet. Did you Uh, learn to floss yet? (laughs) That should be a, a coupled with your gameplay of Fortnite, is learning how to do the floss. Oh, okay. I'll add it to the list. Great. Yeah, no, I think I think I need more time to uh, maybe during the holiday break to like get good enough to hang <laughs> with the people that are probably the great people. at it. Well, now. the thing the thing I really like about Fortnite is that as somebody who is not good, it feels very like low stakes. Yeah, mm. totally. you know, if you if you get knocked out of a match, you can just right. come back right away. You know, it is a lot of the games have kind of a, a leisurely pace where mm-hmm. you're just exploring on your own and you're not really seeing a lot of people. It gets very intense at the towards very the end. end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, if you're using, you know, voice mm-hmm. chat, then it's just a great way to kind of hang out with friends. So yeah. I, I kind of like that in comparison to some of the other more mm-hmm. like hyper competitive shooters yeah. that are out there. Right. And it's on seasons too. And I think season seven just started. So you can jump in now and people are all kind of yeah. doing, the, doing the new season at the same time. So you're like kind of, evened out you know in that sense mm-hmm. and, the, and the changes they put in all the seasons are pretty significant yeah. so that's kind of like a fun part too it's of like how, how did the game kind of change this time right you know now that you mention it it is it, it you're right it does come across as a very fun kind of experience as opposed to you know you're going to get destroyed and people are going to laugh at you yeah. kind of situation <laughs> well they'll laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe i just won't listen to the voice chat <laughs> During those parts. Get the clips of that, too. I want to look at those yeah. clips. <laughs> those won't be saved. <laughs> Was that, um? did we all weigh in on that category? Games we wish we played? So. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, the next one is the coolest surprise. 
Krista, how about we start with oh, you this me? time? Oh, mm-hmm. me? Okay. So mine definitely has to be the Animal Crossing reveal after oh. Isabel was announced Ooh. as a playable character. I wish I had thought of that one. That's a good one. I just, I mean, there was just a lot of emotion <laughs> <laughs> that coursed through my body wow. in that moment. First of all, Isabel is like one of my favorite characters. So having her in Smash, although I'm not very good with Isabel, I want to be, but I just haven't gotten a handle on her quite yet. Um, having her as a playable character in Smash is just like really amazing. And then mm-hmm. in the true fashion of the bait and switches, you know, then we had like the the really fun moment um, announcing Animal Crossing coming. Um, and that was just so, so perfect. It was just like a, a beautiful day, you know, having both of those things happen um, in the matter of minutes. So yeah, like that is my pick. As that trailer started, you get the sense that this could go either way. And you're I know. Not, I wasn't sure which way I wanted it to go. Yeah. You could, both ways were good. And you just got both van anyway. So yeah. I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> Why not both? Yeah. <laughs> uh, mine would probably be uh, Nintendo Labo. I remember when we started to hear kind of bits and pieces about what this project was. And I was like, What? cardboard and you put a Joy-Con in there and you play it <laughs> and like my mind like couldn't conceive it but then you know you saw the reveal trailer and it all clicked of like oh wow this is really cool and really innovative and you know feels like the kind of thing that N- Nintendo is just so good at is you know taking traditional video games and giving them a very unique spin um, and it's unlike anything else and I'm, I'm just you know really happy that it exists mm-hmm. because it's it's something that you know isn't out there um in any other form and is just so cool yeah i remember we got to um you know here internally at nintendo got to play with nintendo labo and just kind of learn about it yeah. and kind of build our own projects together and with a ton of us all in one room and it it made me it took me back to like, like recess school. Yeah, yeah i was gonna say yeah something like everyone was smiling friends. and we yeah. just got to see what everyone did and and how we customize our mm-hmm. projects and yeah it, yeah, that was really That's special. Cool. For me, um, this maybe is a little bit more expected. I would say the coolest surprise was just the reveal of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, mm-hmm. mm. and the way it was. It came on the heels of some announcements for Splatoon Two, and it, at the beginning, it looked like a yeah. Splatoon Two trailer or even a Splatoon One trailer. The characters kind of had that original look, mm-hmm. and then it just segues into surprise. It's a new Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, and um, I think everybody was really taken off off guard uh, by that. One other thing I would uh, kind of put in this category uh, for myself is Starlink. Um, mm. When that game was announced, I was like, all right, that looks cool. I'm probably going to play that. And I, I didn't follow along super closely with all the mm-hmm. other details that they put out there. But when I started playing the game, I was really surprised at you know how it was a lot more than just this open space exploration game. Mm-hmm. And kind of when you get down on a planet, the mechanics totally change. And there's a lot where you're kind of in the gravity of that planet and you, you can almost jump in your ship Mm -hmm. and it felt a lot more like a traditional kind of action adventure game in that way where your character is a a spaceship Mm -hmm. so i just had no expectation that this game could have uh, so many different twists on what you could do in a in a starship and that really kind of blew my mind it was cool yeah that game was full of cool ideas all right our next panel category is our favorite in-game moment kit you want to go first this time uh i shall um, mine is, uh, another one from night in the woods. Uh, this is, um, I didn't know what quite what to call this, but, um, Angus in the constellations. And this is one, again, going back to the kind of the theme of that game and how it's very relatable and it kind of ties into experiences that you may have had in your own life. This is about two characters who are kind of out at night and they're looking up at the stars and they're kind of identifying constellations and you can use all the characters in this game are animals by the way so you mm-hmm. see a little, little little chubby cat paw up in the sky <laughs> like drawing out these constellations and you do that for a little while and as it progresses this character angus kind of transitions into this like very honest and like real story about how he had a very difficult childhood and i think it just kind of it reminded me of like situations where you might be like out with friends you know, late at night hanging out and it, you know, it's kind of lighthearted and fun, but it kind of can, can transition into something that's mm-hmm. very personal and emotional and real. And you don't just see that from games so often. And I was really surprised at how well they pulled that off and it, it didn't feel clunky. It didn't feel awkward at all. It was like, wow, this is, it this just is felt like you were looking in on like a very authentic moment. Yeah. It felt like real yeah. life, which was amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to follow that with a very, 
opposite oh. in game moment. It involves you though, so wow. that's good. <laughs> oh um, no. <laughs> this is this is back to Fortnite. Now, let me just tell you that me and Kit, we're terrible we're at Fortnite. <laughs> like the worst. People laugh at us like very much. Okay, so we're terrible Fortnite players. But somehow, somehow, while we were recording an episode of Nintendo Minute, we were on Fortnite, we somehow got a number one. Victory, Victory Royale. Royale. Wow. We, did we it. have it on camera. <laughs> it's captured we, forever. We bumbled our way into that but Victory somehow, Royale. But somehow, it was, it, was, it was the most <laughs> incredible miracle that has ever happened. I've never been able to get it again. It's been many months now. And um, yeah, I was like, I don't even, I don't know how this is possible really like going through the comments of that one where people are like i've been playing this game for you know so many hours and these jokers just like <laughs> yeah. stumbled into this yeah we were such dummies but we i, I don't know it was amazing <laughs> that it was just like a funny moment that was a joyous moment it was joyous yeah. i have an, another moment too which is um booting up diablo 3 and seeing that game on my switch for the first time was so cool because i've been a diablo fan and just a fan of blizzard for a really long time and i never you know, thought that it would come back to a Nintendo platform and having that game, you know, being able to take that game on the go and being able to play that again on Switch has been really, really cool. And just like that moment when you see like the Blizzard logo and then the, the game screen comes on, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm like holding this in my hand. It's uh -huh. amazing. Yeah. Well, that, I think that, that with that game and some other ones, when you, for, especially when you play it in handheld mode, it's just like this whole other thing. Like, I can't believe this is shrunk down and it's working and yeah. it's running so great. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I thought about a couple of things. Um, um, we mentioned it before. Uh, getting to the end of Celeste was a, I felt really great about that. Also, just unlocking Simon Belmont because, like I said, I was so <laughs> looking forward to that character. So, when his silhouette finally showed yes. up and he challenged me. Of course, they took a few Did fights. Did you beat him to, first time? No. It was no. hard. They took a few fights. They yeah. get pretty hard, they yeah. Do. I mean, I'm not the best Super Smash Brothers player, but... I'm um, still struggling through a few of them, too. Yeah. yeah. I just keep going back to the challenge door whenever me it glows. Me, too. Me, too. <laughs> but I think my favorite moment would be, and I talked about this a bit before, was Celeste. And, you know, it had a story that I just felt really, um, that really resonated with me. And one of the early things in the game that happens is, um, before you really understand kind of where they're going with the narrative, is that Celeste starts to, or rather Madeline, starts to have a, kind of a panic attack. And the way that you work through it so she can continue in the game is there's she has to imagine a feather and she has to imagine that she's keeping the feather balanced. And this is something that a friend of, of hers in the game t suggests she could she should do. And so there's actually a gameplay mechanic where you're keeping a feather kind of in the middle of a, of a certain area. And um, I just felt like, OK, so at that moment I was like, so this is where we're going with this. This is this story is really taking an unexpected turn and it's really, um, uh, you know, special. So. Uh, that moment sticks out in my mind. There's several others from Celeste that are a little more spoilery, so I won't, I won't bring those up, but I really like that. Now, from favorite in-game moment to our favorite in-real-life moment. Krista, what was your favorite IRL moment? Um, kind of talked about this already as well, but I just still go back to that first reveal of all the Smash characters and that big artwork. At E3. Uh, I was standing on that that deck where we have uh, Treehouse Live with Mr. Sakurai, actually. And he, he had his phone, like, pointed at the the screen, that huge screen we had right, in the that Nintendo That stretched booth, the whole width of the booth. That stretched the whole width of the booth, waiting for the moment the booth was opening on that day for that that artwork to reveal. And he, and I looked at, I was looking at him when, when it happened, and he just looked so excited. And then, of course, like... You know, that was just the key uh, visual that we had for the entire sort of the entire launch. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really will always remember that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, mine, we're, we're getting super specific here. This is this is definitely a my life moment, uh, but it was um, picking up Pokemon Go again. Uh, over the summer, um, mm. I had kind of fallen off of Pokemon Go for a while for whatever reason. And um, I was like, wow, it looks like they're adding a lot of cool stuff to that game. Mm -hmm. So I came back over the summer and um, they have added really good stuff. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing it every day, um, sending Krista gifts, mm -hmm. sending all sorts of people gifts. Yes. We're best friends we're, now on yes, Pokemon Go. In Pokemon Go only. We're not best friends IRL, no, anywhere but in else. Pokemon but Go, in Pokemon, we're Pokemon Go, friends. we are. Um, but yeah, they continue to add great stuff. They just added trainer battles. So we got to check that out, mm -hmm. but it, it really is kind of that, that daily Pokemon experience. That's really fun and always changing and, and always rewarding. Yeah. That whole experience just keeps building and exactly. getting better. Yeah. 
Well, my favorite moment uh, also came during E3, and this was actually at the tournament that was held for both uh, Super Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. Ultimate and Splatoon 2. It also involved Mr. Sakurai because yeah. I, I really enjoyed just being in that space, and it was uh, it looked great, and the, there was some great high-level play from the um, competitors. And I just love seeing the overall enthusiasm from the fans for those games. But more than anything, I really appreciated seeing the developers when they got to go up on stage. And, and you know, I'm not a developer. I can only imagine. Um, but I imagine that it's, for them, it's especially before these games get announced or, or released, it's just a lot of, like, long hours working, um, you know, with your team and uh, getting these games done. A lot of times when people don't even know what you're working on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's I would imagine it's to some degree kind of an isolated process. And then to be able to be there with the players of your game with the fans of those franchises in person um, and to kind of feel that appreciation, I just thought it, it seemed to me like a really special moment. Mm -hmm. And those are our panel only oh categories. Oh boy, is it time? Can't delay it anymore. I'm so excited. We're finally here, back to the player's the game one. of the year. Here we go. The nominees are Celeste, Dead Cells, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, or Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm and on the, the edge of my seat. You're all right. Kate, are you on the edge of your seat? I am. Okay. You don't look very much on the edge. <laughs> Pins and needles. The, the, the reverse edge. I'm leaning back. <laughs> You're bracing yourself. Yes. And the winner is... Super Smash wow. Bros. Ultimate. Woo! Yay! Very deserving, of although course. all of these nominees would have been very deserving. Yes. It's yes. all great games. Awesome. But I think if you're, if you're a Nintendo fan, I think for most people, obviously, mm -hmm. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will be one of those games you look back and remember the year for. That's right. I mean, it has er something for everybody. So mm -hmm. I can see how that one took, took the, took the uh, fan vote away. Is that your personal pick, Chris? Yeah, it would have to be. I mean, I could, you know, I could make a case for a lot of these games, and in different ways I've enjoyed them all so much. But... Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was the game that I, I look forward to for the longest mm -hmm. and just constantly with every new reveal and every new video um, got more and more excited for. Yep. And to have it show up and, and not only deliver the experience I was hoping for, mm -hmm. but in a lot of ways for me personally surpassed it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really defined not just the end of the year, but all the months that led up to mm -hmm. it. I got so much enjoyment just from, yeah. just from anticipating say, the game. It's such a good buildup because we you know, t started talking about it in March really mm -hmm. and building that up all the way until December was like quite the you know the barrage of information and reveals and exciting mm -hmm. moments and things like that so following that game was almost a hobby yeah. in and of itself <laughs> yes yeah. very much so that was actually not my personal pick oh. was oh. that your personal pick um so I had a cop out I have a, I have co favorite games okay. of the year and oh, I kind of I kind of like put, do that. I put myself through some agony of like oh well let's drop this one or let's drop that one and I just say like no we can have both well, as long as you went through some agony I'll allow yeah, yeah. yeah I know you like that um, so Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was one of them mm -hmm. and you know I think for me it's hard for me to remove Super Smash Bros. Ultimate from kind of the continuum of all the Super Smash Bros. games that have come before it all the way back to the Nintendo 64 and I think back to, you know, just all the great times that I've had playing multiplayer um, with my friends over the years with that game, kind of the the unique sort of fun that it brings that's so different from so many other multiplayer games. And, you know, looking at Ultimate specifically, you know, this is a really great group of new characters that they brought in. I've had so much fun playing all of them. And, you know, I was doing a, a squad strike match and I was doing it with five characters. Those were the those were five that I chose, all new characters. And mm -hmm. that, that was really like, wow, these these are great characters. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not just choosing them because of the novelty. They're actually really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, squad strike, I think they added some really great um, new modes. And then just all of the encyclopedic, you know, video game, you know, information and music and all the stuff from, from World of Light that it just makes you know, the ultimate package. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well hey, said. I yeah. see where yeah. that came from now. So that's that's a, that's game one. Uh, game two is um, Night in the Woods. I just, I just couldn't drop that one. Um, on paper, that's the kind of game that I don't usually like, kind of a adventure game. But, you know, it has everything, you know, once you start playing, I was like, wow, everything about this really adds up to something very special. It's got, you know, a really great story. You know, the characters and the dialogue, like I said, are some of the best that I've ever seen. 
Um, it has th something that was really unique about this is it introduces a lot of one-off game mechanics that you'll only see for like a five minute interlude at a time and that you'll never see again. And it's like, what, what was this? This was really interesting. I wish we had more of that, but it's like, oh no, we're off to the next thing. And it just keeps introducing these new ideas. So it's more, so it's so much more than just an adventure game where you're just passively getting the story. You really feel like you were involved in it. And, um, you know, the music is great. Um, it's just the, the, the total package, I would say. That's my game of the year. Oh, wow. Night in the Woods. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, now you have to play it, Chris. Okay, yeah. so it's, it's, it's moved up to now. the top of the list. Games I wish I played. Night in the Woods. <laughs> I'm writing, <laughs> it, writing down it down on my official paper. You should have yes. played. But that game really kind of opened my eyes to, you know, a different style of, of video games that's just very unexpected. You know, I had... Um, a lot of elements in it that seemingly could be like, this This is boring, you know, because you're just kind of like walking through this adventure. It's a little bit slower paced. It's very dialogue heavy. So you think like, I'm, I'm probably not going to like this because it's going to be slow and, and a little boring. I'm not actually doing any traditional gameplay, like, you know, a lot of platforming or shooting or whatever. Um, but it was actually the complete opposite and really like, you know, immerses you in this in this. Uh, really realistic and honest story. It had, you know, beautiful music. The the way that the graphics were were done was was very well done. Really fit with the style of the game. Um, and then it kind of like opened the door to like I want to play more games like this. And so like I started like seeking out you know more games that kind of had that same feel. And none, none of them really did. But um, but it really uh, just showed me you know it could be you could enjoy. Um, you know, a, a kind of a non-traditional video game in a way, and it could be as an enjoyable of experience as you know playing something more uh, more traditional. So, um, so yeah, I I definitely it made a a, a pretty big in impression on me, and I, I think um, you know it, it definitely was a, a very unique experience. So that is why I chose that game. But of course, you can't you know talk about 2018 without talking about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So of course, that is way up on the list as well. I think that game is one that we will all be playing for a really, really long time and we'll be enjoying for a long time. So, of course, um, that one is, is up there as well. And we don't even know kind of the totality of what that game is with yeah. all of the mm -hmm. DLC characters. Exactly. I'm, I'm very excited to play as Piranha Plant. I know. Too, yeah. so Joker's that's, coming. It's that, kind of fun that it continues into yeah. next year. And, and I'm sure when we do this again next year, we'll probably be talking about this game Yeah, more. in true yep. Smash Brothers yeah. fashion, it just keeps it going. It never ends. <laughs> I'll, I'll still be collecting spirits at that point, I'm sure. I know. There's a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll probably spend more time on that than the green, the green things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think by quite a bit, actually. <laughs> now, before we go, let's take one last look at the complete list of our fan favorite games of 2018. For most fun multiplayer game that secretly ruins friendships, we had Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The best retro redux was Mega Man 11. And the winner of the Welcome Back category was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And the winner of the Whoa Neat category was Nintendo Labo. The best ball game was Mario Tennis Aces. The most hype Super Smash Bros. Ultimate moment was the World of Light reveal trailer. The most challenging game was Dark Souls Remastered. The most relaxing game was Kirby Star Allies. The best looking game was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the best soundtrack was also Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The best narrative was Undertale. And the character of the year was King K. Rool. And finally, the player's game of the year once again was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Well, Kit and Krista, thank you so much for coming on the show. We can finally to... put my paper I face know. up on the table now. All of our like papers hiding. are face yeah. up. It's Scooch all out it there. The middle. Yes. All recorded, all no take backs. Are out. And we'll have to do this again next year. Yeah. Yes, this was fun. To. This is really fun. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That's it for the first year of Nintendo Power Podcast. If you have any comments or questions you'd like us to consider answering on the show, you can email us at nintendopowerpodcast at noa.nintendo.com. Also, we always appreciate it if you can leave a review and be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes as soon as they're ready. Thanks for listening and keep playing with power. 